smell here either. So of the 420 cans they had planned on putting out here, they only put 175 of them out here. None on the second level, and the bastions didn't get them either. Because if no one's attacking the fort, you don't need to protect the curtain wall, it isn't being attacked. So uh, some of the bastions got transformed into other things, like this one here was a chapel. Uh, they used the chapel up here until they were going to build the chapel down there. Below this one here, on the next level down, was the bakery. And then across the way below the big, large antenna on that far side, you're going to find uh, on the very low level of that one is the prisoner holding cell. Now also when you look around, you see this uh, fill has a lot of uh, coral in it. And that's because it was mined locally, and they used slave labor to mine it. Uh, they used slave labor up until the start of the Civil War. And then at the start of the Civil War, Lincoln downgrades the penalty for uh, desertion from death by firing squad to a lifetime sentence of hard labor. And your hard labor served right here. Um, now there's a larger list of things you can do to earn your stuff and stay out here. And that stay can be anywhere from a couple of months to uh, a lifetime sentence. Now, as more and more prisoners came out, more and more slaves got to go home and be free. Now, of the prisoners, there's one more famous than the others, and that's Dr. Samuel Mudd. Now, Dr. Samuel Mudd is the doctor that set the leg of John Wilkes Booth. John Wilkes Booth broke his leg after assassinating President Lincoln on the mezzanine of the Ford Theater. He then got into a tussle with the Secretary of State, got his leg caught in the uh, railing there, broke his leg, and uh, didn't make as clean a jump as he'd like to have, or as clean a getaway. At that point, he had to make a detour on his getaway, um, and uh, that detour led him over to uh, the house of Dr. Samuel Mudd. Now, these guys were friends. Uh, Dr. Samuel Mudd and John Wilkes Booth were friends. Um, they knew each other prior to any of this. And um, so he gets his leg set there, he's got an accomplice with him. They leave the very next day and they ask the question of how can we get off your property without being spotted? And of course Dr. Samuel Mudd leads him to this back uh, dirt road that leads out the back of the property. He says, head on down this path and you get to this certain point you're going to be turning left. Well, he ends, they end up turning right, which leads him into the barn house. Uh, the farmhouse that uh, had the open slats on it, where eventually is where uh, he was shot and killed. Now, there was the Union, uh, the Union Patrol that came through in that area. They, they stopped by Dr. Samuel Mudd's home and they, and they questioned him about uh, his knowledge of uh, the whereabouts of John Wilkes Booth. Uh, and he claimed to not even know who he was. Now, this turns out to be a lie that he will regret later. Because uh, then they catch up to John Wilkes Booth. Uh, now, they, they were under strict orders not to fire. Uh, however, there were two $100,000 rewards for this man's head, so there wasn't anybody that was going to pass that up. And the leader of this, uh, of this uh, squad, um, he had a clear shot through the slat at John Wilkes Booth, and he took that shot. And he caught John Wilkes Booth through the neck, and eventually he bled out four hours later. Now, they also found out that uh, Dr. Samuel Mudd is the man that set his leg. And uh, so they make their way back to Dr. Samuel Mudd's home, where they conduct a search of his property. And upon that search, they find underneath one of his beds a boot. And inside that boot are the initials J.W. Dash, which they associate with John Wilkes Booth. Now he was tried, found guilty of conspiracy. He misses the death sentence by one vote, and then he gets his life sentence upon labor right out here. And that happens in 1865. And at that point, they're all on ball and chain rule out here. So he's running around doing his hard labor with a ball and chain on his leg. Um, he decides this is not his cup of tea. He's not going to stick around at this resort. He's going to find a much better, nicer place to go ahead and reside. Um, he's going to do so by becoming a stowaway on a laundry vessel. They have laundry vessels that run from here to uh, Key West there for the, uh, for the uniforms and such. Um, and he makes his way onto one of these laundry vessels. The problem is, is that he's a well-known prisoner. So when he turns up missing, they shut down all activity and don't allow any vessels to leave until he's found. Now, he's found quite promptly. He's no Waldo, so they do locate him quite easy and uh, they haul him back into the port here. These guys are quite rejoiceful for themselves. They're patting themselves on the back, but they fail to recognize that there's three other gentlemen with the same exact idea, but they don't have the reputation, so no one's even looking for them. These guys get away because Dr. Mudd's reputation, so they owe their lives to Dr. Mudd. Now, at this point, Dr. Mudd is now going to be held in a prisoner holding cell. That's the one I was telling you about above the, uh, below that large antenna. To get there, you walk inside the sally port, you have a brick pathway in front of you. You take the pathway to the left, walk down that pathway, on your left hand side, you'll see a placard right there that says Dr. Mudd's cell. Follow that. And that's going to lead you to the cell. So, pretty simple. Um, now, he's going to be stored in there at that point. They're not going to mess around with him. And they get back to their, uh, their past at the sport here. And one of the things they have to overcome is this drinking water problem they have. And what they have done for this is they have large vats set up out here in the parade ground for collecting water and holding and storing water. Uh, they also had a couple of large boilers sent down. Uh, these large boilers could produce up to 7,000 gallons of water a day. That's provided that this combustible material that they needed for firing up these boilers were sent out on a regular basis. 
And that, of course, wasn't sent out on a regular basis either, so they still had some issues with that. Uh, but these large vats held and stored water out here. The problem with these vats is that when the sun rose, it heats this water up. Now you have this hot, stagnant water sitting there that's starting to grow algae. And that stagnant, algaic water is a great, great breeding ground for mosquitoes. Higher mosquitoes more specifically, and these little guys start spreading disease. Um, yellow fever is one of these diseases that makes its way out here, and uh, it starts spreading through the men. Now they have a medical staff out here, the one doctor, the four nurses, and uh, they have no idea about yellow fever. They don't know where it's coming from, what's spreading it, how to treat it, and there, if there's a cure for it. So as they go through their, their troubles with this thing, they, they kind of think, well, this is a communicable disease. These guys get sick from each other. So uh, their idea is to uh, build a hospital out on hospital key. Nice quarantine hospital. We'll just, just put the sick over there, keep the healthy over here. That'll fix everything. It doesn't. These people keep on getting sick, more and more people get sick, until eventually one doctor, four nurses, die of yellow fever. Um, now they don't have a medical staff out here. So uh, morale's probably at an all time low at this point. These guys are probably wondering what they're going to do. And uh, then they come up with the bright idea of wait, there is a doctor on site. Let's talk to Dr. Mudd and see if he'll give us a hand. So they talk to Dr. Mudd, approach him with the idea. 1867, Dr. Mudd is named the resident doctor at the Ford house here then at that point. So, um, now, at that point, Dr. Mudd's holding cell changes too. Those three slotted windows above the sally port, that's where Dr. Mudd gets kept at that point now. Um, so, we know this from journal entries because in his journal he says that he has these three small slotted windows in his holding cell and he had cut grooves into the floor to pooling areas to collect all that rainwater to give himself a little extra drinking water. And all that can be seen over there. So, um, Dr. Mudd is no expert on yellow fever. He's had a run-in with the prior to the fort here, but he's no expert. What he does know, not a communicable disease. These guys are not getting sick from each other. So he figures he's going to do the only thing that he knows he can do at this point, which is make the men comfortable. That's the doctor's first approach to everything. Make the patient comfortable. So the first thing he does, gathers all these guys off hospital key, gathers everybody down here from prey grabs, puts them right up here on the second level. Nice cool breeze coming through here. Nice uh, shaded area. Going to keep them out of that area and make them comfortable here. Well, the beauty of that all is, is that the mosquitoes like that heat and the water out there. So you get them away from the mosquitoes as well. Now getting them away from the mosquitoes means that yellow fever gets to run its course and subsides. Exactly what happens out here. Now these men, uh, they owe their lives to Dr. Samuel Mudd for his efforts and that he put into, into saving them. And they want to repay this man for his work. Uh, so they're going to give him pardon. They, they want to give him pardon to leave. So they send a courier with a message for Washington, D.C., the president of Washington, D.C., and uh, they send him by way of Key West. Does anyone want to guess as to what happens with this courier when he makes his way to Key West? He's going. He's going. What's that? That's, yellow fever. That's exactly right. He dies of yellow fever. He never makes it to Washington, D.C., um, so his message never makes it. However, Dr. Mudd's wife played a huge role in the release of, uh, of uh, Dr. Samuel Mudd. Um, she kept on uh, pressing the, the fact that they didn't have any evidence against him. They actually tried him illegally on the whole matter of it all. Because number one, all he did was set the man's leg, and all he did know was he knew uh, John was food. So that being the only evidence against him, they had no right to actually try him on those two accounts. Um, however, Johnson, Andrew Johnson, who's the president at this time, was going to pardon this man. However, his vice president tells him, if you pardon him, you will be impeached. Of course, you don't want that kind of a, a scar on your record uh, as a president, so he waits until the end of his term. At the end of his term, his last wish on the way out, his last act as acting president, is to pardon Dr. Samuel Mudd. So Dr. Samuel Mudd gets pardoned at that point. He spent three years, eight months out here at the fort. Um, he lived for 15 more years back in Maryland on his, on his ranch, on his farm out there. And he died 15 years later uh, in a, on a one wintry night when he went out and uh, came down with pneumonia. So it is unfortunate because he spent three years, eight months out here in these grueling conditions. He actually did contract yellow fever. He survived yellow fever. There was another prisoner out here, Sam Arnold, that actually uh, went back home with him. He's the only other person known to live on the Mudd property outside of the Mudd family. He actually was the one that stayed on the property with him and nursed him back to health. Um, so that being said, one more thing is, if you ever hear the term, your name is Mud, that's where that comes from. So we're going to make...